Hey everyone, it's Colt. I'm back, thankfully not sick anymore. Or maybe, maybe I was never sick. Maybe I was spending two weeks trying to grow a mustache and it looked so bad that I didn't want to be on camera so I lied and said I was sick. It's plausible, but I actually was sick. Uh, so this video is on JavaScript symbols, uh, a source of confusion amongst a lot of my students. This video is pretty comprehensive, uh, but up front I want to say there's one topic I don't cover around symbols because I'm going to do a separate video on, on this topic, which is iterators and well-known symbols. So there's something called well-known symbols. I don't go into it in this video, but otherwise I cover everything else. Uh, what else? Oh, like this video, please subscribe, turn on notifications. The past couple videos I've done have all come from suggestions from subscribers and people who have notifications on. So if you want to help sort of uh, decide what comes next, please subscribe. Okay, let's get started. Symbols. All right, so let's start with the simplest question. What the heck is a symbol? So a symbol is a new primitive type in JavaScript. Just like we have number, we've got string, and we have Boolean, we now have a new member in that gang called symbol. And you might be wondering, well, what exactly does it represent? What is a symbol? It is just a unique value, a, a special value that is going to be unique. Uh, behind the scenes, it's essentially, you can think of it as like a really long number like this that is going to stay unique every time you make a new symbol. So we use them in, in situations where we have to have a unique value. Usually when we're trying to avoid name conflicts between variables, or not usually variables, usually properties, keys in an object, but we'll come back to that. Um, unlike these examples, there is no nice literal shortcut syntax. Like to make a string, usually we're just going to do this instead of string and typing it all out. Usually we don't do that. Same thing with number. Usually we don't do this. We would just type the number three. We have this shortcut. That's not possible with symbol. There is no shortcut syntax. If you want to make a new symbol, this is what you're going to type every time. Now you can optionally pass something in and we'll come back to that. You can put something there but it doesn't really have an impact on the value of that symbol. This is like a label. This is good, it's helpful for debugging, for understanding what symbol is supposed to correspond to what. But at the end of the day, this is all you need. Every time you run this, behind the scenes, you're getting a special, unique value. All of these are going to be different. That doesn't mean that they print out differently, they look the same, but behind the scenes, they are not the same. So let's prove that, simply enough. Let's make a variable called sim1 and set it equal to symbol. And then duplicate that and just do sim2. So these are both going to look the same when we print them out or return them in our case. But if we test for equality, they are not the same at all. We get false. So remember behind the scenes, you can just think of giant numbers and they're guaranteed to be different. Except there's one caveat I'll come to at the end of the, this video. There is a situation where you actually can generate symbols uh, that aren't going to be unique. Uh, but just to show you, it, this still applies if we pass in a descriptor, a little label like this. If I make two symbols where I pass in the string cat, uh, they're not equal, once again. They're totally different. But it's, it's still nice to pass those strings in because now when I look at sim1, if I'm trying to understand what this symbol is, it tells me this is a symbol and it sort of corresponds to cat. But that doesn't mean that the symbol is, is in some way based off of the string cat. It, it doesn't use it in any way other than for debugging and, and making things clearer. Okay, so with that out of the way, what I want to talk about for most of this video is why you want these unique values. Why would you ever need a value like this? There's really only one main thing people do with symbols, which is to use them as the identifier in object properties. According to the docs on MDN, this is their only purpose. It's quite blunt. So imagine we have some mystery object that I've collapsed here. We don't know what's in it. Uh, let's say it's coming from some other source. We're getting a bunch of different objects in and we want to add some unique ID to each one so we can keep track of them. So if I just did user.id equals something like that, that's going to be problematic because shocker, there's already an ID in there. Who would have known? And we just completely ignored it. We overwrote it and it's gone. So to avoid that situation, this is contrived, but imagine you know, there are plenty of real world scenarios where you need to add some property in and guarantee that it's not conflicting with something. Instead, we could make a symbol. So we could say ID symbol equals symbol, pass in an optional description like that. And then we just add it in as the key 
and then set that equal to whatever our ID looks like. And now if we have user, we have the original ID still there, and then this symbol ID. And so then to retrieve it, we would just need to use this ID symbol. So we want to save that reference and say user of ID symbol, just like that. And we get that ID back. Now, if we wanted to do this in line as part of the object literal here, and I wanted to say ID symbol right here, just like that, that's not going to work. What actually happens is we end up with a string. If we look at user, it does add in ID symbol, but it doesn't really realize that it's a symbol. So the extra syntax looks like this. We have to add those square brackets around it. And now if we look at user, you can see that it's gone back to being a symbol. Symbols were originally, the idea was that they would allow for private properties in JavaScript that did not turn out. They pretty much scrapped that whole thing. But it is important to note that symbols don't show up in a given object. So if we do object dot get own properties, property names, just like this, and then we pass in user, our ID symbol is not there at all. We get ID, name, city, and age. And if we looped over our object using a for in, we also wouldn't see that symbol. But we can find them, so they're not like secret entirely, they're not private. We can do get own property symbols, and they show up. We just pass in user, and there we go. So I just wanted to clear that up. They are not private. They're not you know, hidden forever. They're just not obvious. Let's put it that way. Now, before I dive into use cases and showing you some slightly more complicated code, though nothing is very complicated, to be honest, uh, I do want to mention, remember at the beginning, I said symbols give you unique values, but they're not always, that's not always the case. There's one caveat. So you can do something called symbol.4. And symbol.4 is a method that will give you uh, a, a symbol, but it won't be unique for a given descriptor. So I could say symbol.4 cat. And every time I do symbol.4 cat, so let's do const sim1 equals symbol.4 cat, and then duplicate it and do sim2. Those are being added to something called the global symbol space. And if we look at them, they look the same like always, but if we do sim2, they now are equivalent. And just to verify that, we'll do triple equals, always better. So when we do symbol.4, it is saying, I want a global symbol. And the idea is that we could then reference the symbol for cat later on, often in a different iframe. So they're shared across iframes. So if you need to communicate or share symbols, this is how you would do that. But otherwise, if we're just doing symbol like this, those are totally different, unique values. All right, so let's talk about a couple of use cases. Here's one example where we're using, well, we will use symbols to represent concepts, an idea, something that's unique. Uh, so in this case, we have a function called get threat level. It takes in a color and it returns like a string, like severe, high, elevated, depending on the color. So the idea, I guess it's based off of like the terrorism threat level scale, something like that. Uh, so we'd pass in red and they're all currently, all these colors are strings, which works except that they're not unique. So something could happen potentially. My cat, her name happens to be blue. I could pass in cat into get threat level and still get low, which is what we would get when we pass in blue. Now that might not be a huge issue, but what we could do instead is replace this replace all of these with symbols. And now if we try and do get threat level, if we pass in blue, which is based off of a symbol, we get low. But if I pass in my cat, which is the string blue, we no longer get that. It's totally different. So we have these unique concepts that we can use. Okay, so the next example is supposed to illustrate how you can use symbols to store metadata essentially in on an object. So I have a class called train and it consists of a bunch of cars, right? So there's a refrigerator car full of cattle, a tank car full of milk, a hopper car full of coal and so on. And I have a length, that's sort of the metadata. And the way it's set up right now is that it's just a regular old property. But when I iterate over this, and let's say I'm just printing everything out, it's printing length and four. I'm iterating over that. And if I don't want that to happen, what I could do is use a symbol just like this. So I make a symbol, save it to a variable, and then I use that as the key. I start it at zero, and then I add one to that property using the symbol to access it. And now when I print everything out, we skip over that because remember when we loop over an object, symbols are not really included. We can access them, but we have to do it manually. 
So those last two examples were a little bit niche. This third one that I'm showing you is definitely the most common application, which is to use symbols as keys to prevent name clashes or collisions. So this is based off of uh, a real thing, just very, very simplified. But imagine we're working on a website, we have a bunch of components. It doesn't matter what they are, uh, but imagine, you know, to do's and lists and buttons and forms and modals and uh, tons of components. And at any point, there could be a problem, an issue with one of them. And so we have an alert service to manage all of those alerts and basically keep track of them and then remove them as they need to be removed. So alert service is just really simple. It's just an object with a way of adding and removing alerts. What's important is down here in my component, each time we make a new component, it gets a special component ID, which is a symbol. So I might have two different list components but they have entirely different, they look the same, but they have entirely different uh, symbols, different IDs. And so that way, if it so happens that both of them have problems at the same time, they both can be inside of our alert service with no issue. So if I call this error handler function, all that it does is take that component ID and add an alert into our alert service using that ID with a message. If we look at that alert service, it's not very exciting, but we can see that there are two alerts, both symbol list component, but they're unique. So if this is all happening dynamically, or maybe this is animations, or we're working with the cache, and we don't know what's in there ahead of time, this is a way we can use symbols to create these unique IDs so we can add something in. We don't have to worry about overriding something. There's no conflict. There couldn't be a conflict. And then the second part of this, just to illustrate it, we can use that symbol, that component ID, to remove them back out which I just did with set timeout. So if we take a look right now, there should be two things in there and then they're both removed using those IDs and there's no conflict, there's no issue. And now it's empty. So silly, simple example, but it's based in truth. It's based in reality. We use these symbols to create unique IDs so that we can add something in, totally unique keys, no conflict, no threat of overriding things. Okay, hopefully that makes sense.